Hello again from the, the Richard and Judy Book Club uh, in association exclusively with WH Smith. Just a reminder that all the books we talk about here on the website, uh, if you get them from WH Smith online here or if you go into their stores, Exclusively them, you will find uh, wonderful material for free in the back. Details of podcasts, those are our interviews with the authors, the authors talking to you about how they write, why they write, what inspired them to write. Uh, also Q&As on the paper um, between us, me and Judy, and the authors. Lots and lots of extra content, really worth uh, buying from WH just to get that. Now the book, another one in our summer read. Second time around for Patrick Gale. Hello, Patrick. It is. Hello. Okay. Uh, you were with us a few years ago with notes from an exhibition. Absolutely. Which did incredibly well, as I'm sure this will do. A, a perfectly good man. Set in Cornwall. Absolutely. Okay. Set in West Cornwall. West and it's not quite a sequel to notes, but it's a, a related yes, to Yes, it. it follows yes. on a little yeah. bit. Yes. It, it has the same mood, I think. It does. Yeah, and, I bring, and I brought back a character who I was worried about. I had to bring her back and give her a happy end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, let's talk about the central character, um, the priest, Barnaby Johnson. The book opens with an absolute shocker. Um, you know, quite often tragedy uh, and, uh, and shocking chapters are kept to the end, but my God, just tell us what happens when Barnaby goes to see a young man who's been crippled uh, in a rugby accident. He goes to see him in his home, doesn't he? Yes, and, and Lenny, the young boy, um, it turns out, has summoned him in order to commit suicide in front of him. Mm. And uh, funnily enough, this was a chapter I wrote out of the blue, Inspired. It read like that. It yes, and it like was inspired punch, by yeah. the same news story that inspired Jojo Moy's novel, Me Before oh, You. The young man who. Yes, who, Daniel who James. Went, it was inspired by Daniel James's story. His Dignitas. parents took him to Dignitas. That's right. And I started off thinking, I'm going to take a young boy to Dignitas in the story. Yeah. And then I discovered it was terribly expensive and this didn't ring with West Cornwall economics. <laughs> and. Uh, it, this, this chapter just sort of came out and then I had no idea where it was going to go. All I knew is there was some mysterious link between the priest and this young man. Mm. And I've never written a novel before with so many potential you know, plot spoilers in it. I have to be really careful not to give up but, too right. much of the story. But, 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 but the point where it twists on about page four or five is where the priest in total good faith has gone. He's chatting to the young man and he says, the young man wants him to say a prayer for him. And he says, why? And the, the kid says, because I'm going to kill myself. Mm. And he doesn't realise he means then and there. Right there, absolutely. Uh, which, which lands... Uh, 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 Barnaby in, in, in inquest in uh, court, in a coroner's court, and, and he's actually, in the opening of the book, he's vilified by the press. They call him the priest of death, don't they? Yes, because to be you know, law-abiding, he feels he has to give himself over to the police mm. for arrest, mm. uh, for having assisted at a suicide. But he didn't. Um, but he didn't. Yeah. He didn't assist, Not but he knowingly. didn't. Well, what the coroner says is, did you do nothing to save to him? Stop, yeah. And crucially, Barnaby says, well, yes, of course I did. I prayed for him. I prayed for his soul, yeah. which then leads to him being taken up by a great sort of Christian Facebook lobby for um, <laughs> speaking up for the power of prayer. Yeah. But I, I researched it meticulously, and the particular drug, it's a veterinary drug that Lenny takes, does kill you within about five minutes. Mm. So there really wouldn't be time in Penzance to get, a, get an ambulance there no. in time. Right. No, no. I mean, uh, one of the things I, I, I love about your books is that they're incredibly thoughtful, and they deal with our notions of, of goodness and what's right and what's wrong and all the rest of it. And Barnaby is a, is, is, is a very interesting character because he's obviously a good, he's a perfectly good man of the title, he's obviously a good man, but actually an awful lot of his goodness has resulted in the unhappiness of other people. Yes. And that is what you explore in the book. No, absolutely. Well, without giving away too much of no, the no. plot, that he and his wife um, decide to adopt a Vietnamese orphan, which goes, goes horribly wrong in a way mm. that they couldn't really have expected or planned. Um, I'm very interested in damage done for the best possible reasons. Right. And, you mean the road to hell is paved with good intentions? Kind of. And, yeah. and I, time and again I write novels about families, because it seems to me that the, the ideal of the family, this ideal we all carry, is usually unattainable. Mm. Every family will have some damage in it. Mm. And it's often damage done out of love. You, you mm. want to do the best thing for somebody, and you just mm. put your foot in it. And yet sometimes, and I, will, I will quote an episode in the book, sometimes bad behaviour results in something lovely. Like, for example, Barnaby and his wife, they have what develops into a fairly sexless marriage. Mm. And their son, who is total adopted son, who goes totally off the rails, he's a nightmare. Um, he ends up uh, painting vile, vile graffiti on, on, on the church. On the, on the village church. So Barnaby and his wife plod there with the whitewash and they paint it all out and they get rid of it. And for the first time they have a moment together. 
They're, yes, they're, they're, as they, their romance briefly romance rekindled. Briefly, and they walk home in the moonlight mm. and they make love for the first time yeah. in years because of the bad thing that happened. Now, that was, I presume that yes. was a deliberate sort of reversal. Kind of, yes, because one of the themes that runs through the book, without making it sound too heavy, is the, the writings of Thomas Akempis. And there's a little quote I put from him at the front about how there is nothing good in this world that doesn't have a piece of darkness within it. Mm. And so all the way through the book, the, the good shame. deeds and the goodness is underscored by, by darkness. Yeah. And of course, there is a major villain in it, which is not something I've done before, a really, really the bad pedoph pedophile. man. He's a paedophile rapist, basically. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I wrote in the review that we wrote together of your, your book that this man scuttles like a cockroach from chapter to chapter. <laughs> he's, he's horrible. You want to, want to tread He's very creepy. And I'm quite disturbed by how many readers have been fooled by him. Mm. Quite a few readers have said to me, oh, but he didn't do it, did he? He's innocent. <sighs> he's and they've fallen for it because... They manipulate. Yes, he yeah. manipulates, he's self-justifying, and he passes for good. The, the original title of the novel was going to be Good People, mm. and the irony there being that actually all the characters in it are good, except for yeah. Modest Carlson, who passes for good. Yes. It's, 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 it's a, I must tell you, it's a beautifully written book. You know, I mean, it's not just a great story um, and, and, and an excellent plot. Your, your writing is, is so pleasurable. You know, it's, like, it's, like, it's like eating lovely chocolates, all of different flavours. You know, it's just mwah, it's great. How, how, how important is Cornwall yeah. to the way you write? I think it's... I'm not sure it affects the way I write, but I do regard it as being a character. Whenever I, I write a book in a particular landscape, that yeah. I like to establish that landscape as one of the characters in the book yeah. because it's shaped them. So yeah. the characters in this book have all grown up in this very rough, remote parish in West Cornwall, a yeah. place called Pendeen, that most tourists drive through or don't even visit. Yeah. And it's a tough place and it has shaped them much as a parent would have shaped them. So I had to establish that as a As you as a place. Told, I think we've told you before, we, we live in Cornwall much, much of the time, as much as we can. Oh, much you live in the soft bit, though. We live in the south-east, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we live in the soft The soft, leafy bit. We want to stand on the moor, yeah. It is a leafy It is very soft and leafy, I agree. Um, and I actually, I've just literally in the last two days been filming down there for the Beeb. Um, and I've been trying to, to explain to, 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 to the crew and, uh, and my, my co-presenter how different Cornwall is, how separate it is. Mm. And actually, they began to get it. The longer they stayed there, they began to pick it up. Do you agree with me? Is it because of the River Tamar? It simply cut... Cut, that's the start cut, of cut it. it that's the yeah. start of it. And what a lot of people don't realise until they go and live in West Cornwall the way I did. I started out in North Cornwall. Yeah. And West Cornwall is like an island within an island. Yes, exactly. Because mm -hmm. yeah. West Penwith regards itself as being proper Cornwall. Yeah. And North Cornwall, they regard as sort of Devon. Yeah. So it, it is... I don't think it's an exaggeration to say it's another country. You do and go the Romans, and, 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 and the Romans there. never went there. They, they stopped at the Tamar, didn't well, they? They had the good sense just to trade they with the tin. Left yes, and left yeah. them alone. <laughs> there used to be a lovely bit of graffiti on one of the roundabouts near Hale that just said, you are now leaving England. <laughs> my spirits lifted whenever I saw it. And they painted over it now. It's very sad. You know the actress Jenny Agatha? She's got a place down there. She goes, spends a lot of time there. And she once told us that when she drives over the River Tamar, as she goes past that big post that says, you know, welcome to Kerner, mm. she takes off her watch and throws it over her shoulder. Oh, and doesn't put it back on again until it comes back to England. It's a lovely, lovely it's book. A pleasure it's to meet you. Really thank you so, so much. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, a perfectly good man could describe this gentleman, but it's uh, about the central character, or is it? Uh, by Patrick Gale. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.